All right, good to go. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Caleb. I'm back here with the Rothbard Network. I'm here with Jordan Bateman, who is the BC Director of the Canadian Taxpayer Federation, but you're also kind of the default leader of the no side. There's um, a referendum going on for TransLink tax. They want to raise our taxes by 0.5%. It's a, you know, apparently pay for all this uh, new stuff. So I guess my only question is, why do you uh, hate transit? <laughs> I, I don't hate transit, actually. Um, as a councillor in Langley Township, uh, two terms, I was actually one of the biggest advocates for transit in that community. The problem is, the agency running transit in the Lower Mainland is ridiculously wasteful. And, you know, the only thing they do well is raise taxes. Mm -hmm. So this is an agency that gets $1.4 billion a year today. Uh, they collect 22 cents on every liter of gas. Um, that's up from 4 cents when they were formed 15 years ago. They collect 21%. I just parked at a parking meter here. 21% of that will go to TransLink as a parking tax. That used to be 7%. Um, the property tax, they get a property tax, $250 for the average house in the Lower Mainland. It used to be $50 for the average house in the Lower Mainland. They get a $2 per month levy on our hydro bills, which makes no sense whatsoever, no. but they get it. Uh, they also uh, have a, a toll bridge, which is nine bucks round trip, uh, and then they've been raising fares as well. So Transit wastes a bunch of that money. They already have all these different revenue tools they get, and now they want a sales tax. And they have like six board of directors, right? Like this is a huge bureaucracy. Yeah, they have six boards of directors, all of them meet in secret, with uh, almost 60 people on these different boards. Um, that costs about three quarters of a million dollars every year. They have right now two CEOs. The uh, former CEO was uh, kicked upstairs to become an advisor because, quote unquote, he had lost the public's confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, he has no confidence from the public. But we're going to keep him as an advisor at you know thirty-five thousand dollars a month salary. Then they hire a new guy to replace him for six months. He gets thirty-five thousand dollars a month. Um, the executives share it in um, uh, car allowances. They share in uh, just unbelievable things that you would never expect a transit agency to do. Uh, stuff that you can only get away with when you're a monopoly because that's another issue, right? Like if I wanted to, let's say I would start a shuttle business and take it from Surrey to downtown, am I allowed to do that? Or no, not without TransLink's permission. And this is probably, for me, the biggest flaw in TransLink's legislation, other than some of the governance stuff. Mm -hmm. They get to approve all of their competition. So uh, there's a, a group of young guys down in South Surrey. And they had, they noticed there was an empty park and ride that TransLink had mismanaged and, and no one was parking. And they wanted to uh, basically run a high-end Wi-Fi empowered bus from there to downtown. Just sh shuttle people in and out. Yeah, great They service. get all set up, they're ready to go, and, and they call me up and they're like, Hey Jordan, we want to give you a free trip the first time around. I'm like, great. You know, what's TransLink say? What do you mean what's TransLink say? Well, I said, you're running a transit service, you can't. What do you mean? I said, you better read the act. You're yeah. breaking the law. Oh, wow. And so they go, they had to go cap in hand to the TransLink board. The TransLink made them jump through a bunch of hoops in order to get it. And, you know, it made it so impossible for it to be fiscally uh, viable because, of course, TransLink gets the big subsidy. They don't. Yeah. And they went under. I, that, that is absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, and your website, or like, not your website, but the, the no TransLink website, um, it has a list of stuff that they're just wasting money on like empty buildings and yeah. a, a statue of a poodle. Yeah. Yeah. No translink tax SCA. We've been posting a waste story every day of the campaign. I think we're up to week eight or nine now. Um, so every weekday, so we're about 40 or 45 stories. We have more than 90 in the hopper. So it'll carry us right through the end of voting yeah. May 29th. Perfect. And you know, it greatly amuses me when um, translink apologists say, well, that's only, you know, some guy posted a blog post, you know, in uh, early January, you know, all this waste they're referencing is only one tenth of one percent of the budget. Well, you know, that was after four things. You'll notice he hasn't actually added up all 40 of them, or certainly not all 90 mm -hmm. that we're going to be rolling out. So plenty of waste to be had at Translink. Oh, and some of it, to me, doesn't even make sense. Like I saw, it, it, like, what, was it like 500,000 on um, uh, like a dozen TVs? So that's like $40,000 a tele. How do you? You walk into a store, yeah. it's like they're hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get forty thousand from a television? Well, they got um, some federal government money towards it, and they got excited and went for the high end everything. Uh, yeah. Now the funny thing is, um, there was thirteen of those TVs purchased. Um, I went around when we, so a whistleblower tipped me off. I did Freedom of Information, and then I went and took a look at these TVs. Four of the thirteen were working. TransLink sends out a press release the day we send out ours saying, "No, Bateman's wrong." Six of the thirteen are Six. working. Oh, that makes it so much better. Yeah, that's that's better. So yeah, so that's eighty thousand per working television for uh, for translate. 
my biggest complaint about TransLink is they spend too much money on things that don't move a single person a single inch. So, you know what? It's great to have pretty SkyTrain stations and mm -hmm. Main Street Poodles, which is this seven foot poodle statue on top of a 25 foot pole that costs TransLink $30,000 to install. It's nice to have all that, but it doesn't move anyone yeah, anywhere, no, right? It like, doesn't. Focus on your job. You have one job, TransLink. Yeah. Move people from point A to point B as efficiently and effectively as possible, and that's where they completely fall down. And, you know, and since the 1920s, uh, Ludwig von Mises, of course, the economist, has been showing us that, you know, when you have monopoly and, you know, you kind of force to pay it through taxes, there's no rational economic calculation whatsoever. So it's, it's actually not surprising that they spend this much money and that it's so wasteful. And what really gets me is the salaries. Like on your, uh, the notranslink.ca website, you have like the, the, the CEO, one of the CEOs, mm -hmm. like makes more than the Prime Minister of Canada. Yeah. This is, to me, the most offensive piece is um, because the board meets in secret and because they're a monopoly and because there's no political accountability, they set incredible pay rates for their executives. And, you know, the CEO of TransLink in the Lower Mainland gets about $150,000 a year more than the CEO of the transportation system in New York City, North America's biggest, four times yeah. the riders in New York City, but gets, you know, 30, 30 or 40% less. LA or Chicago, number two and number three largest systems. Mm -hmm. Both of them pay their uh, CEOs less than TransLink pays their CEO. So we're actually overpaying the market for our transportation CEOs. And you know, TransLink and their apologists think that's great. That's well, well, we need the best and the brightest. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, we had two SkyTrain shutdowns within four days last summer. If that's what the best and brightest can do, give me the mediocreist because uh, I'd be willing to, to pay for that and bet mm -hmm. I get the same service. Oh, I know. And uh, when they shut down, too, I uh, actually I actually moved here last summer, so this was right in the news as soon as I got here. And they, uh, I guess um, the people stuck in the, uh, the SkyTrains actually opened the door and started yeah. walking. And they, they said, don't do that. Stay in the SkyTrain. Like, you can't even leave a dog in a car in the summertime. Yeah. And they want all these people stuck in these little sardine boxes. Yeah. Like, just wait for the proper authorities. Yeah. The, the, the Twitter pictures were the most frightening where, you know, there was this lady and she has a baby in one arm and she's on this very narrow guideway and there's two, on one side, you know, electricity and the other side, electricity, and she's carrying her baby in her arms and pushing her stroller following this long line of people towards the station. The other thing was just how flippant Translink was. Their communications director, who, by the way, gets a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, um, she comes out and says, well, you know, next time there's a SkyTrain shutdown, it's a wonderful time to support small business. Go and have a coffee and yeah. relax. Yeah. Well, you know, let them eat cake. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> essentially, so, yeah. So ridiculous and so tone deaf. And mm -hmm. the one thing about this campaign that the yes side underestimated is that every person in the lower mainland has an experience with TransLink. Mm -hmm. And they're drawing on that experience to shape how they view what TransLink is doing. Mm -hmm. This isn't some entity that doesn't affect people's lives. They interact with it every day mm -hmm. and often in negative ways. Mm -hmm. So they're shocked that there's this latent dislike of TransLink. Mm -hmm. Well, follow your own Twitter stream. People loathe that People, agency yeah. and loathe the way they're treated by it. Yeah, I've got high hopes because, you know, this is the province that rejected the HST, so mm -hmm. I'm hoping, you know, the same thing happens here. But I, it, as long as the Yes campaign is not effective because it is everywhere. Like, yes. you go, like, right on the buses, uh, the, the billboards, everything. And it's not like, oh, there's, you know, this referendum or whatever. It's like, vote yes. You vote yes. That's what it really is. Yes, or you the will what? die of cancer. Yeah, well, that was one sort of quote. Yeah. yeah. No, well, that's an actual, like, I saw it this morning on the yeah. bus. It's like, you vote yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so, like a direct order. Yeah. This is actually another hugely offensive part of this whole process is they're spending seven million taxpayer dollars on all these ads. TV, direct mail, yeah. robocalls, telephone town halls. And the vote yes, not like a, not no, just just vote and no. do your democratic duty. Like vote yes. Not educational at all. This yeah. is all about vote yes. Mm -hmm. Seven million dollars um, of taxpayer money. Money that was taken from people for public services. Money that was taken from people on threat of putting you in jail or taking away your house if you didn't pay those taxes. Exactly, yeah. They're spending it on a political campaign. And I find that just appalling. They're collecting massive amounts of voter data that they'll all use in their political campaigns going forward, which violates privacy rules. Um, we're spending, uh, we'll spend about $40,000 by the end of the campaign, all after-tax donations yeah. from people who've already paid to fund the S-side. People voluntarily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yet, we get more criticism because the Taxpayers <laughs> Federation's kicked in 14000 yeah. of the first twenty-eight that we raised. Yeah, well, you're all um, ideological, conservative, yeah, libertarians. Secret. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, sort yeah. of secret conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Koch brothers. That's my favorite funny <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I can tell you the Koch brothers have never sent a check to the CTF, but our address is on our website. So Charles and David, if you're out there, yeah, please, feel free to send a check. Fund. Um, yeah. But yet, speaking of how biased, uh, I have a, yeah. I have a ballot here. I'm not sure people on the podcast can't see it, but maybe on YouTube. But even on the ballot, it's got a list of all the supposed benefits you're going to get from voting yes. And like then pretty it, icons. Yeah, pretty icons, and then it directs you to a vote yes website. Yes. Like, right? they they refuse to allow the no side to distribute any information. So in the HST, you had the yes side and the no side each making their case on a page mm -hmm. within the ballot package, but not on the ballot itself. They refuse to do that for this one. Um, so not only are they spending $7 million taxpayer dollars, they're spending $5 million to actually run the mechanics of the campaign, yeah. and it essentially is an advertising piece. Yeah, it's, this is the ballot itself, and it's right, uh, right on the ballot. So. Yeah. yeah, so you know, while we're hopeful, and the polls certainly look like they're trending in our direction, we are, you know, every night I go to sleep and think about the $7 million uh, foot, government foot about to squash me, and I wonder, you know, and I hope that people are, are strong enough to, to resist that, vote no, and and send these guys a real message. Yeah, same here. Because it's it, right now it's a 0.5 tax on you know yeah. sales, but like you know next year it could be one percent, two percent. Like it's just like you know like the property taxes yeah. and everything else. Like you were saying before, yeah. the just mayor's plan. Yeah. The mayor's plan is uh, even with this tax is 140 million dollars a year short by year 10. Where's the easiest place for them to get that? It, yeah, wow, just know. bump up the sales tax to one percent. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly not cut spending. That's no, sure. and this is a frustrating thing for us too. Is you know. You don't have, they'll say you don't have a plan. Well, no, we actually do. No translingtax.ca slash better plan. You could fund the mayor's entire plan by allocating, earmarking just 0.5% of the 5% annual revenue growth rate those municipalities get every year towards it. You fund the whole thing. Yeah. No sales tax, no problem. Of course, you know, uh, when it's going to be, you know, 5 or 6% later on down the yeah. road, I know maybe that's why they need the sales well, tax. Maybe they just be honest and say, well, you see folks in like five years, yeah. it's going to be more like 10%. So. Yeah. But if people saw <laughs> Translink being more efficient, yeah. they might be willing to go along with it. And here's the, the real fallacy on the guest side. Efficiency isn't a scary thing. The reason you want government agencies to become more efficient is so that they have more money to provide more service to more people. Mm -hmm. So by wasting all this money, they are actually creating an environment where they're passing up people on buses and where SkyTrain's breaking down, where things aren't being maintained properly. That's on them. That's not on taxpayers for not paying enough. Mm -hmm. That's on them for mismanaging the way they, they collect their resources. Yeah, and once again, it's just it's pure um, economics. They have a monopoly. We, we can not, not pay our taxes. Exactly. And then, yeah, yeah, there's no competition. It's always the taxpayer, right? Yeah, it's, it's, just, yeah. it's just their, you know, it's not our money. It's their money. They'll just pony up, it would be perfectly fine. Yeah, it'd be fine, just the bottomless pit of the taxpayer. Yeah. So, um... And we should, like, and think about that for a minute, right? Like, the nerve of that kind of statement where um, people in this region are facing higher property taxes, thanks to their municipal governments. Mm -hmm. Higher MSP tax, which is, claims to be a, a healthcare insurance premium, but is actually a flat tax. Um, or per head tax. Mm -hmm. um, higher uh, basic uh, personal exemption, so actually, or lower basic personal exemption, so you're actually paying more in income tax. Mm -hmm. You're losing your homeowner's grant. You know, all these different things, CPP, EI, all these things have yeah. gone up. And, you know, hydro, ICDC, yeah, two other government One of the most expensive yeah. cities in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And they're wondering why people are you know, saying no to this. We can't afford to say yeah, that. Yeah, because it's like, what, like $300 yeah. per household, something like yeah, that? It's when about 250, yeah, it's about yeah, $250, yeah, $250, $258. Yeah. 250 million divided by about a million households. Well, you know, you talk to families on the playground. I have three kids. I pick them up from school. and You talk to families. We're all in the same boat, swimming in visa debt, you know, charging groceries just to get by month to month. Uh, you know, all these different costs going up. You're feeling squeezed. Your income's certainly not going up the same way everything else is. Now they want another tax. Yeah, and already... But they're good. But it's going to save you money. That's yeah, what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Of course. Of yes. Course. We actually extrapolated that based on their faulty model that if um, we just paid that tax for a thousand years, we'd all be millionaires. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, so, speaking of the campaign, on your side you have buttons and yes. there's lawn signs, but I, I've read that the, the lawn signs have been taken down. Yes, the lawn signs have been picked up in Port Coquitlam, uh, home of Greg Moore, the leader of the Yes campaign. Uh, they've been picked up in Surrey, uh, Langley City. A couple have gone missing in Langley Township, although I suspect that might be provincial crews because, uh, rather than actual municipal crews. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got missing in U.S. Minster. So uh, despite the fact they have $7 million, uh, despite the fact they have all the levers of power, they're also going to send their bylaw officers out to pick up these signs, even though this is a provincial campaign and Elections BC says that the fact it's provincial trumps the local sign bylaw. 
Oh man, it, it, it's this sounds like uh, something going on in like Latin America. It's hard to believe this is actually happening in Canada. It's hard to believe, and I'm hopeful that they've been so over the top and so ridiculous with their um, with trying to buy this vote and threaten people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you talk a lot about the politics of fear, right? Um, Harper and his politics of fear, or the Republicans and their politics of fear. This is the ultimate politics of fear campaign. Right. Mm -hmm. If medical doctors coming out and saying, we're all going to die of cancer if we don't vote for yes. <laughs> you know, we're all going to be fat because we're in cars if yeah. we don't vote yes. We're all going to die of uh, asthma because, you know, we didn't vote yes. An asteroid's going to yeah. hit Vancouver. Exactly. We're going to destroy the economy. We're yeah. going to, you know, if it was really going to happen that way, mm -hmm. wouldn't the government have found a way to fund it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Like the audacity, I can't like even get into the mindset of um, a yes voter when you look at these salaries yeah. and how much money they waste, and then thinking that oh no, yeah, they just need a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And now they bring in Jimmy Pattison, the beloved billionaire, um, to oversee this new tax. Although his committee has no teeth, no power to hire or fire, can't do anything except you know a rubber stamp and audit. Um, and people, are, the funny thing about that is that backfired too because people are like, wait a minute. I didn't elect a, this billionaire. Who is he yeah, yeah. to see? And why do I have a mayor and council if we're just going to have the billionaire oversee it, right? I, so I nothing they've done has worked in this campaign. It's because people inherently don't trust TransLink because they've seen the record. Mm -hmm. And people pay too much already. Yeah, uh, already. Um, does, does no side have any stickers that we can get? No, no side does not have stickers, although I've seen a few people with uh, apocryphal uh, label printing uh, yeah. happening uh, out and about. I think I might make that happen because yeah. every time I see these these bus ads, yeah. it's just revolting, and I'm sure I'm, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, Sorry. but I'm I'm definitely advocating vandalizing these uh, <laughs> these signs. If you print every yeah, no your sticker, tax and just, well, that's yeah. exactly it. This yeah. is you know we are the government, right? Yeah. So this is you know my bus yeah. just as much as it's your bus. One of my favorite things that's happened on Facebook is whenever a mayor's council ad pops up. First of all, you'll see it has like they've been running this one same ad over and over. It has something like 680 likes. It had 850 comments. Of the 850 comments, 800 of them were against the tax. Against, yeah. And of those, about 15 of them, people posted the logo, no translating tax, and said, you know, <laughs> this ad was purchased without my consent by my taxpayer dollars. <laughs> Vote no translating tax. Nice. And uh, that to me has been, that's been my favorite part of the campaign, when I click and see that little logo. And... Um, so what do you think is going to happen then, uh, I, I'd like to say when, but yeah. if uh, the no vote... Um, Wins like what? What's the mayor's council going to say? What are they going to oh, do? Um, what will happen the day after no vote? Well, the sea buses will still be in the harbor. Mm -hmm. The sky train will still be running. People will still get on the you bus. Mean everything's everywhere. just not going to crumble exactly. and break. And, yeah, the yeah. sun will rise. And civilization I, I, will not I don't, end. I don't believe it. I think we need to pay our taxes for the <laughs> yeah. sunrise. Civilization somehow will not end, um, even though taxes apparently are the price we pay for civilization. Yeah, which yeah. Is the, Tell it to the Soviet yeah, Union. The strangest uh, <laughs> comment of all, but. Um, what I hope happens is the political leadership in this province, the Premier, the Minister of Transportation, the opposition leader who's also on board with this nonsense, the, um, and the mayors, actually sit in a room together and say, look, what have we learned? People hate TransLink. Mm -hmm. We need to go and spend three years rebuilding it, rebuild public confidence in that organization, mm -hmm. open the doors to the public, you know, not have secret board meetings, hire a CEO who can actually... Uh, is this what you want to happen or what you think? Well, this is what I want to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the other people, you know, fix the governance structure, make political people, elected people accountable for it so we can vote their dumb butts out of office when we get crazy things happening. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that seems pretty obvious. The other portion then is to sit back and go, look, the people have spoken. They can't afford more taxes. Uh -huh. How are we going to fund this out of... You know, um, yeah, out of what we already, already get, collect. The millions they already get. Exactly. And whether it's our proposal on growth, whether it's... One of the amazing things is the number of ideas other people have come up with on how to fund it. Uh, things that I may or may not agree with personally, but they have ideas. You know, use the ICBC surplus. Use uh, legalized marijuana and use the proceeds from that tax. Yeah, okay. um, all sorts of different options. Um, but, of course, the mayors are so, you know, sold out on one sales tax because... Cities in Canada have never had access to the sales tax, mm. and they've coveted it. They've drooled over it. They've demanded it in every fiscal policy framework 
nonsense white paper they've put out for four years. They wanted that sales yeah. tax. Yeah, and it seems like uh, with the election coming up, that on the left side of the spectrum, that seems to be like, oh, you got the cities and transit yeah. involved. You know, it's the environment. It's our future. Sales and, tax. Yeah. Oh, we've got to give a sales tax to a level of government that's proven they can't be trusted with the property. Yeah. Tax. So if, if the no vote wins here, I feel like federally, you know, <sighs> if oh, like, uh, God forbid, if yeah. Justin Trudeau becomes prime minister, it'd just yeah. be like, oh well, we're gonna, it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. It's going to be all this, over Canada. If this passes here, then she will demand it in Calgary. Tory on insurance. Yeah, everyone will want it. You'll see it right down to, I think, small communities on BC coast. Those, you know, should you have a sales tax to get extra BC ferry service? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, yeah. we cannot let this level of government get into the sales tax because it's going to create a patchwork across the country, number one. Number two, it's going to cost taxpayers a whole lot more money. Mm -hmm. Number three, it's going to go to a level of government that spending growth has tripled the prop provincial and federal spending growth over the past 15 years. You can't trust them with this money. Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, well, I think that's really all my questions. Is there anything else you wanted to get out there? Yeah, just vote no. <laughs> yeah, vote no, uh, you know, please. There's no wrong reason to vote no. And in the no side coalition, there's people are voting no because of the tax issue, because of uh, the fact that it's a regressive tax. I mean, sales taxes hurt the poor more than they hurt the wealthy. Absolutely, yeah. There are people are voting against it because they think government already gets nothing. The people voting against it because they don't think people should have to vote in plebiscites. This is what we elect leaders to do. Yeah. There's a whole range of options. Yeah, that brings up a perfect point. Like, did we not just have a municipal election about yes. this? Like, could they have not brought that up in the campaign? They wanted to wait till they won and yeah. then bring in Exactly, this. Yeah. exactly. The HST, that's right. They didn't yeah. talk about it during the campaign. No one talked about the sales tax. Yeah. They could have put it on every ballot and the municipality mm -hmm. saved us $5 million. Yes, yeah. that's the other thing. The but is the mayors yeah. knew that there'd be a wave of anti-tax people who come out and vote them out of the office. Oh, yep, yeah. absolutely, so. yeah. Well, Self-preservation. Never underestimate a politician's bench for self-preservation. Oh, yeah. It, it all comes right back to just that monopoly and taxation. Yeah. It, how can you expect any kind of efficient, effective service when there's no competition and you have to pay for it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's no other option to get around. And like, I thought this was the lesson mm -hmm. lesson from the 20th century. Like, oh, yeah, these, these socialist systems don't work. But yeah. apparently we didn't learn anything. Yeah. The, you know, great stat. West Vancouver has a blue bus service. It's actually the longest running bus service in, in Canada around more than 110 years. Um, because of TransLink, Blue Bus is now a contractor to TransLink. Mm -hmm. The mayor of West Vancouver tells us that if they just kept all the taxes that they pay to TransLink in West Vancouver, they could afford to run their entire bus system free of charge. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's what I keep thinking. Like, yeah, they yeah. sent it out of they sent it out of the re, you know out of their city to all these other places, and they could run their own bus system yeah. free of charge. I bet you if we just fired half the, uh, or if we got <laughs> that six board of directors down to just one board, yes. yeah, it's the amount of money they're bringing in right now, there's no reason why it can't be free of charge, just that, the way it is. Yeah, you could definitely do different, well, I mean, Vancouver with the weird zones and stuff, and uh, yeah. there's so many, so many weird transit it, it, things. Yeah, this is the only city I've ever been in where, like, you go on this, the, the, the Sky Train, the subway, yeah. whatever, and... Like, there's no, you can get on for free. Like, yeah. Everywhere else, there's some, like, machine you gotta put a coin in, yeah. or there's actual, like, people standing there. And yeah, there are, like, transit police. That's that's a whole other issue, yeah. why we have transit police and why yeah. they have guns. Yes. But, um, tra yeah, the, actually, I was reading it on your Facebook page, this Facebook page, that uh, less than 1% of riders actually get um, ticketed, and then of those tickets, only, like, 10% pay them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so, pretty dismal. Don't ever pay for Scott, the SkyTrain. No. Don't ever pay for transit here. A, All guy, that, a guy wrote a, an op-ed for the Vancouver Sun, and he's been keeping a diary. He traveled to work a thousand days there and back on, on SkyTrain. He was checked for his fares five times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he, could, he says he could have avoided four of them. Oh, yeah. Like, they were at the top of the stairs, and he saw them, and he could have turned around and left. But, mm -hmm. you know, he went through because he had a fare. Five times out of a thousand, he get checked for a fare. I know when I moved out here, uh, when I first got out here, I went to Surrey just because you know, it was a little cheaper. And uh, yeah, I always just got the one zone, yeah. <laughs> always the one zone, and uh, never got. I got checked once, but fortunately, I was in the one zone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I just I forget what I was going to say. There's something uh, related to that. Yeah. Yeah, fare um, evasion is a big problem. Translink says it's between four to six percent of their um, overall riders. Even at six percent, you're talking about almost $300 million since the year 2000 lost revenue. I think it's far higher. Mm -hmm. Drivers think it's far higher. Bus drivers tell us it's oh, more like 25 or 30%. Yeah. Uh, bus drivers here are told not to like confront yeah. therapists. So you could just walk right on the bus and be like, not paying. Exactly. 
and, and there's, there's not, and they'll nothing they can do. They yes, just, they'll take you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and part of it's a safety issue, which tells me that Translink's not doing a good job of protecting their drivers. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, you have these high-paid executives. You think the least they could do is take care of the bus driver. Uh, you'd think. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, hopefully nothing does break down. Not because we don't, we won't know, but just because you know just how inefficient these things are. Yes. So hopefully it, uh, the public safety stays number one, even when it can't be. And uh, well, thank you, Jordan, for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for you know being this kind of getting out there and being the no, <laughs> the default no yeah. leader. Cause Someone had to do it. Like, somebody had to do it. Yeah. We, like we like to say, is they've got the big government and the big unions and the big greens and they the got, big. Uh, they got big everything. Big health. They got, and, yeah, they got, but uh, we have the people. So right. they have everyone except the people, yeah. and uh, we'll we'll stick with them. Yeah, and you know this. Like I said, this is the province that you know. Said no to the HST. Hopefully, yeah. we'll say no to this. As well. I hope so too. Well, Jordan, thank you for coming on. Awesome. Yeah.